Welcome to Ticking Stock with Kelly McMillan. If the name sounds like a business show to you, then you've got it all wrong. Kelly McMillan is the principal of McMillan Fiberglass Stocks and will talk about shooting for fun, competition, hunting, and self-defense. Now, here is your host, Kelly McMillan. Hi, welcome to Taking Stock with Kelly McMillan. I'm your host, and for the next hour, we're going to talk to some uh, great guests and uh, talk about firearms and firearms-related stuff. Uh, also, today is a great day for us. Uh, we're actually videoing this uh, broadcast as well, so that we'll have a podcast, so that if if you want to watch us while we're on uh, a video, instead of just listening, you can tune into the uh, YouTube channel where we're going to have the uh, the uh, podcast hosted, and you'll be able to see us. And we're going to do a, a few things a little bit differently than we would in a normal radio show. We're going to have some products on that we're going to show and, and talk about. Um, our, our first guests are, are here to talk about uh, – their products, so that's going to be really great for everybody viewing on the podcast as well as listeners. I'd really like to start out with um, saying, telling everybody that's watching on video, I've got my uh, McMillan sponsored uh, Kevin Finley fishing team jersey on. Um, it's really cool. He had one made up for me. I think it's really awesome. Uh, he's also sponsored by Signature Gates, Bass Pro, Nitro Boats. Mercury Outboard, and a and Graphics. One of the coolest things about what he does, and he did it last year and he's going to do it again this year, he, he donates $100 for every fish he weighs to Common Recovery, which is a, a local uh, recovery center for people with uh, drug addiction and, and alcohol addiction. So um, I've um, promised that in addition to his, I'm going to match him dollar for dollar on everything that he donates. So we're actually going to have two different donations to Common Recovery for um, uh, Kevin uh, Finley Fishing. So that's going to be really cool. I've got his schedule. He's fishing in the uh, the fishing league worldwide. And uh, his first uh, event's going to be at uh, February 8th through the 10th at Lake Havasu. That's on the Colorado River. Um, and then again, February 15th through the 17th in, in uh, Sam Rayburn, Jasper, Texas. So um, those are his first two uh, fishing tournaments. And we're going to get him in here on a regular basis to, to tell us about how he did and the amount of money that he's donated and everything. We, we hope to have a, a spot for him uh, as we uh, uh, progress and he gets a little closer to tournament time. We'll have him in so you guys uh, get to know him a little bit better. He's been on the show, so if you listen regularly, you've probably heard him. So um, that's I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, you know, we're all firearms guys and gun guys. We love the outdoors, but but one of my passions is saltwater fishing. I, I don't do a lot of bass fishing, but I'm serious. I am excited about anyone who gets to do what they love to do for a, a living. And, and Kevin is a professional bass fisherman, and I just think that's one of the coolest things there is. Right now, uh, talking about teams, um, I would like to uh, introduce another uh, Team McMillan team member. He is a member of Team McMillan on the FTR F-Class team. His name is Brad Save. Hi, Brad. You with us? Yes, I am Kelly. Well, I'm really glad to have you on the show. Uh, this is the first time you've been on the show, whereas some of the other team members have been on the show before. Uh, I want to get to know you a little bit better. Why don't you share with our guest maybe two or three minutes of some of your accomplishments, where you're from, just so that they get to know you a little bit better as a part of Team McMillan. Okay. I, um, I'm from Michigan here, which uh, a few of us are, and... Um, uh, being from Michigan, um, grew up in somewhat rural surroundings where, um, as a kid, I always had a gun or a BB gun or a pellet gun in my hand, and and then it wasn't until age 40, really, that um, I saw someone shoot beyond a few hundred yards, and I think Ray was there, actually, um, and um, then um, you know, kind of caught the bug with... Um, uh, that whole game of uh, seeing how accurate one can shoot out to long distances. 
Um, I started actually uh, palma shooting or shooting with a sling and iron sights for many years, uh, probably because some of the local shooters were also in that type of competition and uh, really loved it. Actually made the uh, U.S. Palma team uh, cut, which was nice, and and then um, competed for several years at Camp Perry in nationals uh, in that style of shooting. Then um, F-Class started up. In 2002, they had the first Worlds in Canada, which I attended. I think I was like 60th or 70th place and shot an accuracy international rifle in a 7 mag configuration. But then they had the first um, uh, U.S. Nationals for F-Class here in the U.S. in 2004. So I've attended uh, U.S. Nationals for F-Class ever since then. I think I missed, uh, I missed one Nationals. And during that time, for the 13 U.S. Nationals I attended, I've been in the top five uh, eight of those times, and then uh, in the top place, first place, for, for three of those years including the first one, um, the third one, and the fourth one. And then um, in team competition at U.S. Nationals, for the 13 times I attended, uh, I was on the winning U.S. Uh, national team 11 times, um, 10 times as a shooter. And so that was a, that was a goal of mine to, to reach that number 10 spot as a shooter uh, for team nationals. So well, um, that's... Uh... That's, That's it, quite a uh, list of accomplishments. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, uh, during Worlds in, in 2013, I was able to shoot uh, on the U.S. team uh, where we got first. And then as an individual, I was sixth that year, which I was happy with. So my, my goals individually is, is to try to be in that top five uh, positions in U.S. nationals for long range. And then, uh, of course, um, try to win every year uh, the team event at Nationals, uh, now under Team McMillan. So. Well, I, I really hope that we have as a good a run as, as you guys have had prior to coming on to Team McMillan. Uh, you know, it, it, the, for me to support the sport, which I've been trying to do more, uh, a lot of people know that I kind of stepped away from supporting uh, competition shooting while I was running the rifle company, but now that uh, I've sold that and I've gotten back to our roots and really looking at trying to help the sport and pr produce products that really work, um, I'm all excited and, and having really good shooters shoot for Team McMillan is important. One, because people will notice that you're shooting for Team McMillan uh, fortunately, I know almost everybody, and I think you and I have met, but we haven't spent a lot of time together. Um, I'm really proud of all of the guys that are on the team. I'm, you know, it, it's part of who McMillan is uh, to be thought of in in high regard, and I, that's the way I want my shooters to be. And I, I certainly think that all of you guys fit that bill. Uh, you actually were on this year's World Championship team. And, and you had a little um, trouble and, and didn't make it to uh, Canada, is that right? Yeah, that's right. I wasn't able to attend, which was, uh, which was uh, kind of sad, obviously, um, and came up late, uh, um, yeah, just, a, just a few months uh, before the event. So, uh, yeah, I, um, I couldn't attend, but uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, to being part of the U.S. team, hopefully, uh, in the next cycle. Well, I hope that leaves you with a fire in your belly to get out there and win the uh, team championship at Berger and, and all of the events that we're going to compete at this year. I'm really looking forward to see you when you come to town here. I uh, want to get a chance to give you a, a tour through the shop and get you a little more acquainted with what we do and make you feel a little more comfortable with our products. I know you shoot McMillan stock, so I'm, I'm happy about that. Well, i got to mention that that first U.S. Nationals, I actually used a Macmillan stock and a Macmillan rifle. It was my first 308 I ever owned. <laughs> so uh, it's it's kind of interesting this this whole cycle where now I'm part of Team Macmillan, so very proud of that. And um, actually, another fellow on our team, John Drolly, I, I made the mistake of lending him that same rifle to shoot on the U.S. Nationals in 2005. And but for a uh, um, 
you know, one shot, uh, which uh, they called as a miss, but was very suspicious. He would have placed second with that rifle in 2005. So uh, it was a great gun, and uh, I'll never get rid of it. Uh, and I'll pass that one on uh, to one That's of my children anyway. That's a great story. Yeah. That's a great yeah. story. And it's always bad to be beaten with your own rifle, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Here I thought that uh, I could just pick another one out of the out of the safe at the time and <laughs> and uh, be able to do it. I, I I did get fourth that year, but yeah, after uh, after being on top, it was uh, kind of a disappointment. Well, thanks for being on the show, Brad. I'm really uh, looking forward to uh, seeing you shoot out in um, Ben Avery in February, and look forward to getting to spend a little more time with you. Yeah, anytime I can get in Phoenix, uh, being here from Michigan in February, it's I know it'll be a good time. So <laughs> appreciate you having me on. I look forward to it. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Now I want to move right into our first guest. I've got Robert uh, Badgett and David Weiss of Weebags. If any of you have ever heard of Weebags or you're into PRS shooting, you know that they're just about the only bag in the game. So uh, very glad to have them on the show. Guys, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you got into uh, the business, um, why you decided to make bags, um, how that happened, you know, what kind of shooting you do, and, and a little bit about uh, your history. Uh, well, this is David, and uh, we actually, WeBad was started on a hunting trip. Um, out in West Texas mule deer hunting, which the season's right after Thanksgiving, about seven or eight years ago is where the idea kind of came about. And originally it wasn't really steered towards long-range shooting, although I had already been shooting off and on competitively long-range for several years. Um, But as we got back into town and asked, you know, what if we were going to do with this and everything, and then we started talking to some friends that we shot with and stuff like that, and... uh, Basically, I bought a sewing machine and learned how to sew. Um, and then as friends brought problems to us to try to help solve as far as stability and shooting more accurately further, uh, that's kind of where we got our start. Well, you've got an assortment of different products. Uh, first, what I'd like to start with is the pump pillow. Uh, I've got Zev here in the studio, and he's going to be kind of demonstrating the the bags for our watching audience, but if you would talk a little bit about how they got developed and um, why that particular pump pillow came about. Uh, The pump pillow actually... Uh, What we have here is a pump pillow. It was designed as part of the Ultralight series. Um, It is designed to extend your reach and eliminate space in the body. So was that pretty close? Yeah, that's pretty close. Um, you know, if we're gonna if we're gonna talk specifically about kind of the ultra lightweight series of products that we have, we've kind of got to go back kind of half of a step and talk about the tack pad a little bit and you know how that product was created and what that was about. Um, so, so basically, the tack pad was just created to be a lightweight bag uh, and take us away from kind of just the standard rear bag configurations that we were used to. So what this bag would allow us to do is this bag would allow us to create shooting positions as opposed to just increase or decrease the elevation of our rifles or give us, uh, you know, kind of confirming places to shoot off of. For instance, if we took our rear bag and kind of just placed it kind of on a limb or on something like that if we were shooting off of uh, harder surfaces. Um, the, the evolution of that with the tack pad, like I said, was, was basically uh, just to give us the capability to take up space in our body to make us more accurate because to, to us and kind of what we saw is some of the things that made us the most inaccurate was the positions that we created with space in our body. Uh, so by eliminating that space, that allows us to eliminate the muscle strain that creates the more inaccuracies for us. Um, once our industry began to evolve as far as the shooting competitions are concerned, our products continually evolved. So that took us from the tack pad to the pump pillow. Uh, For instance, shooting off of rooftop scenarios, we needed to extend our reach there. Uh, You know, so the added depth of the uh, pump pillow gave us that capability. 
Uh, on top of that, um, shooting off barricade positions that actually allowed us from a kneeling standpoint to, to place that pump pillow kind of in our laps to actually give us stable platforms to shoot off of supporting the rear of the rifle as well. So, you know, you no longer had to be in a prone position to be able to support the rear of the rifle. At this point, you could also be in a kneeling position or any other position. But uh, to be completely honest, it, it truly amazes us every time we go, you know, to these matches because uh, every single one of these shooters out there that, that utilize our products, um, they are so innovative and come out with new ways to use them every time we're out there, uh, you know, at shooting competitions. Um, it's, it's amazing. You know, one of the first uh, pads or, or um, bags that I ever came uh, in contact with was the fortune cookie. Uh, explain that to us a little bit. Um, uh, tell us how that came about and how it's used. Well, the fortune cookie, so there was kind of a trend to go ultralight for a long time, and that is definitely something that is wonderful for hunting and things like that, and matches about when those products were developed required a lot more movement, uh, where you actually had to, you know, one stage of fire in the precision rifle series or even pre-precision rifle series before it even existed. They made you run and gun, so to speak, where you had to move you know, maybe 20 or 30 yards between shooting positions and stuff on the clock. Um, in the last couple of years, there's been more of a return to, you still have to move, but you may not have to move over, say, 10 yards within the whole stage of fire. Um, and the heavy bags overall, generally you are much more stable off a heavier bag when you're shooting long range. It's just if you've got a run and gun and stuff like that, you won't, don't want to lug six pounds around. Now, the fortune cookie was designed to shoot off of fence rails, pipes, um, window seals, deer blinds, things like that, uh, where something that's a very stable shooting position is definitely a great benefit. And you, you also have the, the mini fortune cookie, obviously, in a, in a smaller bag when it's uh, not convenient to have the bigger one. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You give up a little bit in stability for the smaller size, but being at half the weight, you know, you just got to decide, you know, is it worth the extra weight carrying around or not? Absolutely. And, and to add to that also, you know, there are some shooting positions, say, for instance, if we're shooting through portholes or something of that nature, the addition of the bag with the scope height does not allow us to necessarily be able to use one. And the mini fortune cookie has been a great product for filling that void to where it, there's actually not as, it's not as thick, uh, and we're able to actually place that into the portholes and be able to use that with the scope height. It can fit into tighter spots, Absolutely. whereas you couldn't use the bigger bag. One of the things that I can attest to, because in most of the matches, you load your gear up, and when you take off, uh, you've got to have everything you need for the entire day with you. So... Lighter, smaller, better, uh, so that you can get all your gear to where you need it to be without uh, having to fumble with it and, and hassle with it. So uh, I'm sure that that's where the majority of your bags have come into play. Anything else the PRS shooters are using? Uh, yeah, th there's actually a product out there. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it or not, but our nameless bag product uh, so going directly to what you were speaking with, uh, we have a customer demand for um, these navigation courses that a lot of people are shooting now to take our products and actually make them lighter and convert them over to one bag. So we came up with the nameless bag, and it is a nesting product uh, is what that bag is. Uh, it's seen a lot of times as kind of a starter kit, if you will, something that somebody can purchase just to have all of the bags that we manufactured. But that bag basically is a ultralight loop bag and a mini tack pad that are put inside of a uh, modular tack pad, which is a standard size tack pad. And then that bag is put inside of a modular pump pillow with two uh, of our lightweight inner bags in there with it to make it the standard size. And that bag itself um, basically encompasses everything that someone would need out on a navigation course or just basically, you know, shooting at the range to PRS matches that we currently have today. That's a great idea. You know, so many times you see somebody come up with a good product and they don't really 
take the time to to see how they can improve it and and give the competitors exactly what they need. Um, do you guys compete? Yes, we do. Yes, we both do. See, I think that's why you guys have such uh, a command of this part of the market in the PRS shooters, because you're out there. These guys see you at the matches, supporting the sport, being a part of the sport, and they want to support you in addition to the fact that you've got the best products out there. Um, sure. As, and- as most people know, we're going to carry your products on ELRHQ. We've got some uh, that are uh, up on the website as we speak, but if there's somewhere a, a guy wants to go to get all the information possible about the bag and what it can be used for in all of your products, where would he go to find that? Uh, he can visit our website at uh, www.webad.com, and uh, all of the information will be listed there. Uh, we are also doing a huge initiative this year to uh, increase our marketing and put up a bunch of how-to videos, and uh, there is a YouTube channel out there that is available for that. Uh, it is Webad Shooting Gear. Uh, so you should see more stuff popping up there on uh, our YouTube channel here within the near future. You know, that's that's good, and it seems to be the way that marketing is going is to have videos showing how and, and why people choose your products. Uh, what we do at ELRHQ is to have some of the champions in the sport that use your product actually do the demos for us. Uh, uh, we say that uh, ELRHQ is your one-stop shop for all champion vetted gear. And when we say that, we really mean it. So uh, we're going to actually get some PRS uh, champion competitors to do some uh, videos for our website uh, with your products. And obviously, if you have anybody in particular in mind that you've worked with that you really uh, like the work they do, we'd, we'd be happy to take a look at them. But um, yeah, having videos on is really the way to sell things these days. Yes, it is. We couldn't agree more. And actually... Uh, Regina Milkovich, who is on your staff and uh, we support as well, uh, we think she does a wonderful job of representing both of our companies. Uh, she is definitely a friendly face out there, a fierce competitor, and uh, one of the top shooters in the country. Well, her and her husband, Tim, have already committed to being our champions uh, in the PRS sport, so they will definitely get the job of doing uh, some of the videos on your products. That's awesome. Yeah, they're great people. We are uh, very fortunate to be partnered up with them as well. Where are you guys located? We are located in College Station, Texas, which is about an hour northwest of Houston. I know where that is. My brother was actually uh, born in Waco, um, but my dad was stationed at College Station for a while when he was in the Air Force uh, before I was born. So I have an idea where that is. Yeah, we're we're at the home of uh, Texas A&M University. So, love us or hate us, we're the home of the Aggies. <laughs> oh, absolutely! <laughs> I'm pretty good athletic program down there too. Um, so, you, this really started as a hunting product. Uh, you guys are are hunters. I know the type of hunting that you do in in Texas uh, a lot a lot of box blind where you have the opportunity to put some of these bags to use whereas you might not have them stuffed in your backpack if you were hunting the mountains in uh, Arizona or Colorado well we we actually have taken a lot of that into consideration um, as far as the differences in hunting and we've come up with some specific products like uh, one of our original bags uh, the buckle bag was was kind of like our standard rear bag, uh, our loop bag, but we actually went down on the size on that product and we made a uh, strap so it could act easily clip onto the outside of the pack. Um, so th- that one you know, product in particular, uh, we feel like we've paid kind of special attention to the hunting market like in other places uh, to where they would want to use that. And actually the hunting trip where Webad was kind of founded or originally thought of was in West Texas where it's very similar to Arizona. I lived in uh, Phoenix metro area for a little over a year and uh, West Texas is desert, kind of high desert, same sort of uh, material or same sort of uh, type of ecosphere. But uh, it's very much hiking and spotting and glassing, very similar to what you're used to out there, I believe. Mm-hmm.
Well, I can tell a story that attests to the fact that the less stressful a position can be, the more likely you are to be successful. I've told this story before. I was on an elk at, at 850 yards. Uh, the, the cameraman said, you can't shoot yet because there's not enough light. So having to stay in that position for a minute and a half or two minutes until the sun came up to the point where we could um, turn the camera on got me so fatigued that that I just couldn't maneuver and I ended up missing the shot because I was fatigued. So had I had the proper bags and, and stuff to support myself and take that stress out of my position, absolutely would have made that shot, I'm sure. Yes, sir. Well, I really appreciate you guys being on the show. Um, we didn't get to know you guys uh, very much. Why don't you just uh, each take a couple of minutes and um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm curious what you did before you got into the uh, bag business. Okay. Um, I'm David Weiss. Uh, I was born in Bryan College Station area in Texas. I was raised in between Colorado Springs, Colorado and Central Texas. Uh, went to Texas a and University. Um, I've been married to my beautiful bride that I've been dating since high school. I started getting long-range shooting in about 2003, where I went down to visit Jacob Bynum at Rifles Only to learn how to shoot far or how to shoot this rifle that I had just bought, <laughs> um, that I'd spent a small fortune on, I thought, at the time. Little did I know. Um, and so I started shooting the matches that were down at Rifles Only in the mid-2000s, and then I started having kids and kind of got out of it for a while and then got back into it in about 2010. And I've been shooting at least a couple of matches a year ever since then. And um, I shoot a lot of PRS matches last year and I'm shooting even more this year just because I've got the itch and the bug and I enjoy it and the people. The people are the best part about the PRS. And I'm sure other shooting sports are as well. Um, but I mean, everybody is very easygoing, helpful, talk to you if you have any questions, you help each other. If somebody needs to borrow some gear, everybody loans gear to everybody. And any way they can help you, they will. I agree with you yeah. 100%. Uh, uh, we've got about a minute left, Robert. How about you? Well, just, just real quick, uh, you know, my name's Robert Badgett. I was um, in the United States Navy, uh, but more on the intelligence side of the United States Navy. I was a uh, CT uh, while I was in. Uh, did my little stint there, uh, got out of the military, and um, actually went to work for a technology company, kind of uh, exactly what my background was. And uh, I did that all the way probably up until 2003. Uh, and in 2003, uh, we started another company um, that was catered directly towards the restaurant industry called Restaurant Technology Advisors, which my wife is still doing, by the way. Um, I met David probably sometime near the mid 2000s uh, and we just kind of hit it off became friends and the you know that kind of wrote its story right there uh, David actually was one of the integral uh, individuals in getting me into the shooting community uh, quit shooting much like you did Kelly in uh, probably 2003 to apply a little bit of focus to the business uh, we feel at this particular point in time that it's time for me to kind of re-interject myself back out there. So hopefully this year we'll have a good season as I kind of try to start hitting it hard again and uh, improve my shot to be competitive. Well, I want to thank both of you for being on the show. And I also want to wish you both luck in your, uh, not only in your shooting this year, but also in business. Uh, we're going to do everything we can to sell as many uh, wee bad bags as we possibly can. So I hope that uh, ours is going to be a long and prosperous relationship between us. Thank you very much. We greatly appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Likewise, as do we. Okay, thanks. I appreciate you being on the show. We'll talk to you soon. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. And I'd like to remind all of our listeners to stick around for the next uh, minute and a half or two minutes while we take a commercial break. We'll be right back with our next guest. For over 40 years, Macmillan USA has been at the leading edge of the gun stock industry. The company was born out of the desire to improve and perfect form, function, and precision with every one of their premium fiberglass stocks. 
From tactical to hunting to competitive shooting, McMillan stocks are designed to dominate. Their signature three-way adjustable butt plates, adjustable cheek pieces, rail mounts, and adapters provide a versatile platform built on performance. Over 65 custom finishes are available, ranging from solid colors to camouflage. Check out the McMillan website for hundreds of stocks available for immediate delivery. And for those wanting something more specialized, call the knowledgeable and friendly staff at McMillan for a complete list of options at 877-365-6148 or visit MacMillanUSA.com. Again, that's 877-365-6148 or visit MacMillanUSA.com. You are listening to Taking Stock with Kelly McMillan. Now back to the show. Hi, welcome back, and thanks for sticking around through that commercial break. Uh, Action-packed uh, first half of the show. It's been really fast moving. Uh, I love We Bad Bags, and and um, David and Robert were great guests, and and I really look forward to our relationship. Um, since we're on the topic of bags. I think there's only one other bag that I can even think of that has the clout in any shooting sports that We Bad does in PRS, and that's Edgewood bags. Edgewood is the name in bench rest and F class. Uh, you know, I, I could probably count on one hand the number of people that are shooting something other than an Edgewood bag. And one of the reasons that everybody uses Edgewood is because Working with this company is such a pleasure. You can tell them what you want. For instance, we came out with the exit stock. It had a little bit different geometry in the butt stock where the, the rear bag rides. And we just called up, and I didn't, I didn't say we, but I know Paul Phillips was a part of it. Uh, they called up uh, Edgewood and said, hey, we need a bag that has these dimensions and, and this width, and can you do that for us? And they said, sure. And so that, that's the kind of customer service that I like to provide to my customers. So when I hear about somebody who owns a company who puts that type of love and care into uh, catering to their customers, it, I really get excited about it. So I want to welcome Ryan Tuvey uh, to the show. Ryan, thanks for being on the show with us. Hey, Kelly. Nice to be here. Uh, this is a family-owned business, very similar to mine. How long uh, has Edgewood Bags been around? You know, my father-in-law started the company, um, I'd say probably about 16, 17 years ago. Um, he got into it when he started shooting bench rest, and, you know, he felt he could, uh, with his experience with leather, he could create a higher quality bag than what he'd seen people using. And uh, how long have you been with the family? Um, I've been here about uh, six or seven years. I married into it. Um, my wife, Jackie, is Jack's daughter. I was I was leading you into that. I wanted you to talk about being married and your your wife. I want to learn a little about it, about you. Where'd you grow up? What what kind of shooting you did? How you transitioned into the family owned business? So I grew up in uh, San Diego. I was born in Albuquerque. Um, you know, my father in law was into guns and collecting, and he kind of got me into that. Um, and then I actually, as I was growing up, I pursued being a mechanic. It wasn't until I met Jackie that I got involved in this. Well, there's some things about Edgewood bags that I want everybody to understand. And most people, if they weren't serious competitors, either in bench rest or F-class, where the rear bag is probably as important as any one component of the shooting system. Um, different. There's things that make this bag different than anything else. And one of the things that people don't realize is the super rigid flat base is very important. Tell us about how that works. Sure. So, you know, the main idea of the shooting bag is to have an extremely stable platform. Um, you know, one of the difficulties when you're filling a bag with sand and over time the bottom may want to flex or bow, um, obviously that can cause unwanted rocking. Um, one of the things we've done to try to mitigate that is add a new type of material into the base and it just makes it super rigid so it doesn't flex or bow. Um, if you're trying to use that on an uneven platform, we also have what we call a dead bottom, 
which is kind of like a sand-filled pillow that'll take up any irregularities. One of the cool things about the bags is they have a really cool way to fill the bags, and, and it's such that you don't really have to have clamps and stuff once you get them filled uh, in order to get them done. No zippers, no Velcro. Um, but it can be difficult at times for people to be able to figure it out. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about how the bag is filled and, and what you recommend? Sure. So, you know, we have basically a little tail on the bag. Um, it's like a little nylon flap. Um, it's two sewn together, so it creates a little tube. Uh, basically, you just end up filling that section with, we recommend heavy sand. Uh, most of our customers get it through Sinclair International. Um, and I think it's either a chromite or a zircon, really dense stuff to make it as heavy as possible. Um, you know, you kind of pack them till they're full. You don't want to have any voids in there or, you know, room for the sand to move around. That way you get real precision um, and, and nice consistency. Uh, once you're done filling them to your liking, you just go ahead and tuck that little tail right underneath itself and it kind of closes itself. That's cool. One of the things that we've already talked about, my uh, exit stock and, and how the bag, um, and if I'm not mistaken, I think it's a five-eighths inch wide keel with a two and a quarter inch ears. Uh, yeah, I could be wrong about that, but um, th that's two inch ears. That's very important, especially with our exit stock because we have an adjustable cheek piece and it has uh, either thumb wheel or or uh, standard uh, cheek piece, and it has some uh, devices that stick out the side of the stock. So you have to make right. sure that nothing rubs on, on the side of the stock. Um, how is it that, that you guys have set your business up so that when people come to you and say, I need this bag, and you just go ahead and make it? Well, you know, we're a small company. Uh, we're family owned, and, it, and it's just family run. So we're pretty flexible, um, pretty adaptable. If we need to change something or, you know, order new dyes so we can click out different shapes or patterns, um, we can get on that right away. We don't have a, you know, a large company to, you know, have to adapt to changes. So we can kind of work on our feet real quick and get something together. Then again, if you make a stock for the, ex I mean, a bag for the exit, everyone who shoots one can come to you and say, hey, I, I've got an exit, and you know exactly what bag it is they need, and, and you'll probably sell lots and lots of bags because you have one specifically to fit that stock. Because I'll be honest with you, we're selling lots of exit stocks. With uh, the Team McMillan guys doing what they did and Team USA winning the world championships, all of them, almost all of them shooting that stock, it's gotten real popular real fast. So I'm sure that you've seen that in the bag sales. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah, there's definitely been an upkick in that. And, you know, that's one of the way we gauge, you know, whether we want to leave something a custom design or go ahead and set up to manufacture it, you know, as a standard design is how many people are asking for it, um, how popular it's becoming. Um, you, you mentioned that you're a, a small business, and, and I consider McMillan a small business. I've, I've got almost 70 employees and 15,000 square feet when when people see the shop, sometimes they're surprised at how many people work here and how large the facility is. Uh, give me an idea uh, about how big um, Edgewood is. How sure. many bags do you make? Uh, well, when I say small, we're real small. It's, it's my wife and I and her father. Um, her brother was in the business, but he's, he's moved on to going to school to do some other things. So it's basically the three of us, and we hire on help when we need it. Um, you know, but that size works for us. Um, as far as how many bags we make, man, to put a number on it is real difficult. We do it all day, all evening. Um, you know, we regularly get orders from large corporations for 40 bags at a time, and we'll probably kick out, you know, 40, sometimes 50 bags a week, and then there's accessories on top of that and holsters. So I, I put the number right around there. Well, so it sounds like you've figured out a way to do a lot of work with a, a few number of employees. That's correct. And that's sometimes the easiest way to make money. Um, unfortunately, with the process that we have here, I've got about eight and a half hours uh, involved in every single stock we make. 
you can imagine, we made uh, 12,660 stocks in 2017. And at eight and a half hours a stock, you can imagine what my yeah. payroll bill was. But uh, boy, I wish I could do it with a lot less. One of the reasons I've decided to uh, get into the, the plastic stock or the polymer stock business where I can uh, produce some stocks without having so much labor involved. Uh, but what that says to me is that you guys have a great product. You get a, a good price for it because people uh, recognize the quality and are willing to pay what it's worth. And that's how you stay in business. Absolutely. And, you know, I believe it's one of our strong suits because every bag that goes out there is going through the same few set of hands. You know, each of us know exactly the level of quality that needs to be there when something goes out the door. Um, we know every step in the operation. And if something is not right with the product um, or not up to par, you know, nothing leaves the door unless it's perfect. So, um, you know, and when we do have problems, that's another thing we take pride in is our customer service. Any, any time a customer may have an issue with something, they can call us up right away, get their problem solved, you know, immediately. It sounds like your company and mine have a lot more in common that, than people would uh, understand. I mentioned early on that doing business with a, a company that puts their customers first and doesn't necessarily um, have to produce the most or the best, the biggest, but focused on being the best and making sure that the customer is happy with the product. Um, you know, that seems to be a rare breed anymore. It definitely is. And, you know, one of my main jobs here, you know, all of us pretty much do all the different jobs. Um, but I focus uh, my efforts mainly on customer service, um, you know, dealing with our, our different distributors. And that is one thing I really take pride in um, is making sure each customer is taken care of. Um, you know, and they've got enough to worry about without equipment going wrong. So when, when something like that does happen, they love knowing that they're dealing with a company that, you know, will take care of that right away. One of the things we talked about earlier was um, – the different bags that you make, and I know that you're the number one bag in Benchrest, but Benchrest and F-Class are pretty different. Um, do you have any bags that you say are crossover where they're being used both in Benchrest and in F-Class? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we have three, uh, three major designs for our rear bags. Um, we've got the original, which is the smallest, um, the Mini is the next size up, and then the Gator is our full-size large bag. Um, traditionally, the, the small original bag was most popular in Benchrest, um, and a lot of guys would use the Mini or the full-size. It kind of just depends how much weight you're willing to lug around. Obviously, the heavier the bag, uh, the more stable the platform is going to be. Um, but it seemed like several years back, we started really branch out into F-Class a lot more. Um, and the most popular bag with them was the Mini Gator. Uh, it's not super heavy. Uh, the full size comes in around 26 pounds. Your Mini Gator is going to be around 15, 16 pounds. So it's a nice compromise not having to have a huge bag to lug around. And it also works really well for bench rest, too. So I'd say um, 70, 75% of the bags we sell are actually the Mini Gator these days. So that's a crossover? It is, pretty much, yeah. Okay. Uh, the reason that I asked that, and I wanted to make it clear, um, I'm going to say once again that we're going to carry Edgewood bags on ELRHQ.com, and we promote the store as one-stop shop for all extreme long-range and long-range shooting. Um, so I, I suppose we could kind of transition into – you know, intermediate and long range bench rest, 600 and a thousand yard bench rest, if, if you wanted to consider that. But the fact of the matter is, is that if we carry your bags and a bench rest shooter needs a bag and needs it right away, he can come to ELRHQ and probably find what he needs and we can get it shipped out to him. He doesn't have to be an ELR shooter or an F class shooter. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, when you guys came to me and you were looking for, you know, what bag would be best to carry. Um, that's kind of the direction I guided you guys because it, it does work for a lot of different disciplines. 
Um, you know, the main difference in the body of the bags between the three sizes is really just that. It's the size and the weight. So they're serving the same function. Um, and a bag that's kind of in between the two weights is great because it'll work for, you know, someone who doesn't want a super heavy bag but wants one a little heavier than the lightest bag. Um, and then, you know, aside from which bag you choose, the main thing that's going to make the difference is the spread between the ears. So that's really what what's going to change, um, you know, dictated by which stock you're using. You know, it seems odd that uh, consideration on to how big it is and, and the weight of the bag uh, would be a, a factor in either bench rest or F-class. I know the guys uh, in F-class are using wagons to wheel, wheel all their gear up to the oh, yeah. line so they right. don't have to carry it very far. And in bench rest, uh, yeah, you've got your gun, but they give you plenty of time to make a couple of trips back to the to the, the table to, to get your gear to set up on your, your shooting uh, spot. So um, it doesn't seem that that would be a big consideration. What I sure. would think well, might be is how tall the bags are. Are, are the three bags different in height? Um, you can get any of the three bags we offer in whatever height you'd like. So we offer four different heights. Uh, tall is going to be four inches. Uh, standard is three and a half. Short is three. Extra short is two and a half. And and going back to what you were saying about the weight, you know, it it's really more of a how much weight is necessary, I guess you could say. So, you know, the full-size gator, is that going to do the job um, and be even more rock steady? Sure. But is it moving around when you're using a mini gator? No. So, you know, I think people go with the minimum weight they think is necessary regardless of how easy it is to move around. Well, I know in bench rest, the uh, the light varmint's 10.2 pounds and the heavy varmint's 12. Uh, F-class, the uh, FTR is 18.8 pounds and, and the uh, open is 22-something. So I could see where with the heavier guns uh, and the heavier calibers, a little bit more pounding on the bag for it to be more stable and, and rock solid, I think uh, would would show dividends. So I could see why they might want a bigger bag where on a bench rest, if you're shooting a light varmint gun, you may not feel like you need that extra, you know, six or seven pounds uh, on the pad, on the, the rear bag to, to make it shoot accurately. Sure. And to that point, you know, we have some uh, 50 caliber customers who really like the full size Gator and they just want the heaviest, uh, most rock solid platform possible. I just uh, redesigned one of our stocks. I don't know if you've heard about it. It's called the the Beast. Uh, now I have a Beast Two. It's it's specifically designed for extreme long range, uh, two mile shooting, uh, but it's got a super heavy four end long, so they can put those long heavy barrels on it, still be right. stiff. But what I've done with the second generation is I've raised the butt stock to be in line with the center line of bore, uh, we're hoping, and we're testing it now, we're hoping that that's going to help to control the recoil, keep the impulse down and straight back rather than getting any muzzle flip, and, and we're hoping that that works. What, what has happened, though, is we've basically raised the buttstock an inch. So if they were using a three-inch bag, they could go to a four-inch bag, and they should have the same um, ability to, to get in the same position. You know, I've actually been talking with Derek Rogers about that, um, the new, the second generation, I guess, of the Beast. Yeah, he's um, the one that's doing the testing. So. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, he sent me over some pictures, and we're kind of going over some ideas on, you know, how we can change a bag um, to make it work better for that. Uh, what you do run into um, is being that the, the bottom of the buttstock is a little bit higher is you don't want the body of the bag to then interfere with where it comes down to the to the sort of pistol grip area of the stock. So we're kind of messing around right now um, and seeing what we can come up with for that. So we may have some ideas on that for uh, maybe even a, a special bag for that stock. Yeah, it looks like the bag that I'm looking at is a, the the ears are about four inches long. Is that right? Yes, on the mini gator, they're four inches from front uh to back. Okay, so I suppose if we wanted to shorten that down from the front towards the back so that uh, we could, uh, you know, e even if it's a, a hard kicking gun like a, 
a 375, 408, or a 50 cal, if you've got a guy laying behind it, it's still only going to recoil about an inch or an inch and a quarter. So right. if we don't have any more travel than that, I think we'd be fine on that. But yeah, that's a consideration. And it, and it makes me even that much more respectful of what you guys do because you think of those things. You don't want to put out a bag and then say, oh, well, if, if, if it interferes, don't, you just have to deal with it. You, know? you want to make Absolutely. sure that you get it right when you first come out with it. Well, and the great thing is that we do have um, you know, competitors like you know, Paul Phillips and Derek Rogers who we can come out with a design based on their requests. They can try it out in the field. Um, and, and give us feedback, you know, before we start uh, releasing a new design to other shooters, we can know that it's working uh, with the pros. So that, that's a great thing. Where are you guys located? Uh, we're, we're split two shops. We're in Albuquerque and we're in Edgewood, New Mexico. So um, Jackie's father runs the other side of the production up on the other side of the mountain, just east of us, about uh, 28 miles so it was convenient for Derek to come by and talk to you, and you've probably seen the stock already, and you, and you have everything you need in order to get that right, I'm sure. Yeah, he, he comes by, you know, frequently. Um, we spend time talking about stuff, and he'll bring stocks over and kind of show us how it's working on the bags that we've made for him. Um, I haven't seen the beast in person yet, but I do have some pictures already that he sent over. Isn't Derek one of the nicest guys you've ever met? He is. He's great to I'm, work with um, and just great to sit around and talk with when he comes by. We have a good time. Well, I'm so honored to have him shooting for Team McMillan and for representing my products. And he's actually one of our champions on ELRHQ.com. So you'll see some uh, videos from him uh, talking about the different products and stuff. But he's just such a great guy. And, you know, as you know, he started out shooting 50 cal, and then he got into F class. He's the only only person ever to win the FTR and the Open Championship. Uh, such an incredible shooter! It's unbelievable what he can do. And obviously, now the the king of two miles. So uh, he's he's just anything you put in front of him, he'll learn what it takes to be as good as he possibly can. Absolutely, that seems to be the case for sure. And it always includes an Edgewood bag. Um, if anybody wants to learn more about what you guys do and, and your products, uh, they will know that we carry them on ELRHQ.com. But why don't you tell them uh, your website address and let them get a little more familiar with what you do. Sure. So the website address is www.edgebag. That's just E-D-G-E-B-A-G.com. And, you know, on there you can find all kinds of information about uh, new products we're working with, um, coming up with new designs. Um, then you can actually follow a link. There's a place to go in there and, and shop all the different products. You can find pricing, directions on how to fill your bags, um, and contact information if you need any help uh, with products or ordering. Um, and, you know, that's the first place I would send them. Uh, our email address would be sales at edgebag.com. If you want to send an email inquiry, that's where I'd send that. Well, Ryan, I really appreciate you being on the show. I also am really honored to have you working with uh, the Team McMillan guys. If I'm not mistaken, I think we've got Edgewood on on our team jersey. If not, we'll get it on the next one we print. I know that's coming up for the, the summer. But I really appreciate all the help uh, you've given all the shooters and, and really being part of a great company. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you having me on. We're really excited about the... Uh with you guys and you know if you or your customers need anything feel free to let us know appreciate that ryan thanks thank you kelly and now i'd like to uh thank all of our listeners for sticking with us through this last hour had some great uh guests on the show really exciting stuff and for those of you interested in seeing what we can put together as a video podcast look us up on elrhq youtube channel and it should be up probably sometime next week I appreciate you being with us, and we'll see you next week. Thank you for tuning in to Taking Stock with Kelly McMillan. Be sure to come back for more next Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on the Voice America Sports Channel. The weekend is here. Enjoy yourself. We'll talk again next week.